and welcome to Dance Teachers Academy. I am your host, Jose on the mic, and with me is the lovely, amazing dancer, Amay. How are you doing? Good morning. How are you? I'm great. All right. Wonderful. Uh, we have a special guest today, uh, Diana Liz Gallego. And I'm going to let you say those other names. you got a lot going on, actually. <laughs> well, How are you um, doing, my, first of if all? If you take my baptismal and my confirmation name, my full name is Maria Diana Elizabeth Gallego de la Garza. There we go. So, <laughs> and as one you do of have my a lot going on. Also say Idel Tango. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You got a lot of energy on you, and I love that. You know, well, that's, that's you. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, Digging it. I didn't have all this energy a year ago. Oh really? No. We're gonna um, we're gonna go down that road and see okay. what happened. All righty. So I know you from uh, really contributing to the community here with the Ballet Folklorico. Okay. Yes. Well, um, uh, people think that, a lot of people think that that was uh, my first love and passion. And actually, uh, my first love was classical ballet. Okay. And then um, I went, um, was introduced to modern dance in high school by one of my mentors. And I went on to get a degree, a uh, bachelor's and a master's in modern dance. And okay. I was hired um, in uh, 1991. Um, by the Dallas Independent School District to teach at the Arts Magnet Middle School. And I'm sitting there like three days before school starts, and I'm talking to the principal. I could tell there was something really wrong in the conversation. Uh -oh. and, <laughs> okay. And I said, well, Mr. Salinas, the principal, I said, what is it I'm teaching? He says, well, don't you know, Ms. Caigo, you're teaching ballet folklorico. Oh. <laughs> Mexicano. Surprise. And I said, wait oh a minute. Gosh. I was born, uh, you know, a mile from the river. I grew up a mile from the river, but um, I grew up before um, the black and uh, movement and, um, and racial discrimination. And, and brown was not beautiful. <laughs> Oh. And so we did not do those peasant dances in, in our community. Oh, we wow. did classical ballet and Spanish dance. Okay. Oh. So I had my first pair of castanets when I was four. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, I, 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 I had, I'd seen some of the dances, you know, on, on various occasions, that, you know, during the... I think it's funny. Yeah. On the on the eve of your of yeah. your and the, well you know the the program was ordered by the federal courts. Really? It was part of the desegregation of the Dallas Independent School District. Oh, that is so interesting. We're getting a wow. history lesson here. <laughs> yeah, we're, get, so we're getting a history lesson here, kids. Pay attention. Have, There's going to be a test find later. A certified teacher uh, in ballet folklorico, because uh, you know a teacher that was certified in dance by the state of Texas wow. that was qualified to teach folklorico. So they had substitutes and and people just there. And the position I know had been vacant for five years when I took it wow. over. And the principal said, Miss Gallego, you are certified. You will do just fine. <laughs> yeah. Not, not that you know what you're teaching. Yeah, and um, um, well, Anita Martinez Ballet Folklorico and principally uh, Omar Angeles, uh, who ended up being a, uh, a ballroom instructor. Yes. He gave me private lessons for a year, and I stayed one class ahead of the students. Yeah. <laughs> so it's fresh. At 18, and then I joined the National Folklorico Association and had a marvelous time um, traveling uh, one year in the U.S. to study with the best folklorico maestros de Mexico okay. and one year Beautiful. in Mexico and I got to uh, learn my full heritage and it was exciting wow. and I learned, I got a deeper understanding of family and issues that had that seemed, you know, kind of like crazy, but it, it really began to, make, everything began to make sense and sort of um, fall in place. Yeah, and it was just, it was a beautiful way of claiming my full heritage because my family was in Mexico for 300 years before they came to the U.S. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> this is a good yeah. story. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, you've got a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So now this is so great just to talk about this because we talk about this a lot on Dance mm -hmm. Teachers Academy about how dance, we start off in our life mm -hmm. maybe to do 
uh, dance for one reason, mm -hmm. only to find that it heals us in so many other ways. Right. Yeah. So I love dance. Um, I always tell people, if you're going to have an addiction, that's the healthiest addiction to have mm -hmm. because it gives you so much back. Yeah. And so this is amazing. This well, is how you start there's to another story. The reason that I... Uh, <laughs> another layer of the sun, <laughs> um, you know, my grand I, I love to dance. It was natural. And uh, my grandfather decided that I should have formal instruction when I was four years old. And of course, you know, going from dancing and playing and running around and, you know, dancing around the weeds, because it was, I had spent a lot of time at my grandparents' uh, ranch uh, on the outskirts of, of Laredo, Texas. And, but going into a formal situation as a four year old is not as much fun as dancing while yeah. <laughs> jumping in but puddles. But <laughs> you got a tiara. Oh, <laughs> and, <soul>. and, <laughs> I was thinking recently I needed there we a tiara. Go. You know, and you got glittery costumes, and it was, yeah, I, I danced for the costumes for a long time. Okay. <laughs> That I is still funny. Do. <laughs> yeah. I still dance for the costumes. I love yes. it. Yeah. yeah, I still do too. I'm about to get you a little tiara though. Anyway. <laughs> I, I need one. Some, some I hair need bling. Yeah, I was thinking about that recently. It's crazy yeah. to say that. Well, uh, you received an award recently, and I think it's a really big yeah. deal. So tell us about that. Um, I was recognized um, by the Southwest Jewish Congress, uh, and I was selected as an Audrey Kaplan Inspiring Woman of the Southwest. How about that? And I love it that. was, um, yeah, it was an enormous recognition. Uh, yes. Um, you know, Gloria Campos has gotten that award, and Anita well. Martinez has gotten um, that award as well. well. And uh, my friend Elvia Wallace uh, Martinez, um, uh, who's one of my mentors and heroes, um, she also received the award. So it was. Um, it was very humbling but very inspiring at the same time and it was um, in recognition of all that I have done for the Hispanic community over a period of about 24 years okay. um, I um, you know I started off a little festival at um, Griner Middle School and um, because I, I wanted to know who the teachers were in the community <laughs> And, um, what better way than to get them out there on the floor dancing? Yeah, I get them out on the floor dancing, and they're, they're students. And so I did this little neighborhood festival, and 10 years later, it was the largest folklorico festival in the United States. Go on. And, um, yeah, and, Good job. Yeah, it, nice. was, it was so exciting and so beautiful. Um, but it was very difficult to maintain that, that level of production and still do my job. And so I became uh, ill, and I had to uh, cut it down. And um, to do, I did a much smaller festival uh, for the kids. I did the Texas High School Salsa Championship. Oh, there you go. And it was a lot of fun, and um, and I did that for a number of years. But I could see that that our community, all of our community, with all the folkloricos, and there's a great many of wonderful. Um, just amazing teachers um, who train these very talented students who fall in love with dance. But the doors of the university were closed because if you haven't been introduced to uh, classical ballet and modern and modern dance, you can't make the audition to be admitted to get a degree in dance and become certified and to bring it back into the community. Wow. So um, I uh, said, you know, I, I love these festivals that I've done, uh, but I need to do something different. And so I did the Folklorico Leadership Institute. And um, through it, um, I brought in the master Folklorico teachers from, from Mexico. And I got um, um, students who were at the university that were Latino who did modern dance. And we had them introduce modern dance, not, you know, some uh, foreigner uh, from, you know, we had kids from the barrio. Uh, yeah, keep it in house. Um, and um, it was an amazing program. They did uh, three folklorico classes and one modern dance class. And uh, we went a little further. Um, we uh, had a partnership with the University of Texas at Permian Basin. And we were able to uh, give scholarships to full ride scholarships for dancing folklorico to kids. Now these were not going to be dance majors. These were kids who 
uh, were going to study education, nursing, engineering, um, and well, we were able to give them full scholarships. They danced at the university. They have to get up at 6 a.m. twice a week to go to rehearsals before school and uh, perform in the community and make a connection, wow. be ambassadors into nice. the community. Yeah, well, they're Latino getting a full, yeah, they're getting a full ride, yeah. so you may, yeah. Yeah, you got to yeah. put the work in. Nice. And, um, I yeah, I would have liked to have continued that program, but when I, uh, as, the, as my responsibilities grew at um, um, Dallas Independent School District as a theater and dance <clears throat> coordinator, um, I started a, another project um, and because you didn't have enough going on, <laughs> yeah, I didn't have enough going on. So I started um, the um, uh, Summer Dance Institute um, um, for the DISD kids, okay. and uh, we. I continued my partnership, trying to get connect the Latino community and dance, and we uh, offered ballet, modern, jazz, hip hop, and some co form of Latino dance. We um, did uh, flamenco and we did uh, folklorico. We had one year, we even had a Silvia Lozano, uh, director of the Ballet Folklorico uh, de Mexico. Wow. Uh, yeah, she came uh, herself and she brought two of her assistants with her Sweet. and did a workshop for the kids. Um, and we had Israel Pena and Elisa Holt uh, come and do, um, you know, samba, salsa, paso doble. Uh, for the kids and they had an amazing experience with that as well wow. yeah so I retired and I was burn up used <laughs> I was gonna say I can't I was, I was gonna say can't imagine you uh, retiring <laughs> well I well I retired uh, with a purpose in mind okay and um, that purpose is um, to beat Alzheimer's uh, somebody's got to do it yeah. <laughs> well um, um, you know, my first, my grandmother passed away from Alzheimer's and, uh, shortly afterwards, uh, her son that took care of her who had Parkinson's, uh, also brain inflammation, uh, illness, he passed away within six months of her death. Wow. And, um, then my mother's baby brother, um, uh, was, um, went into a memory care facility and passed away from Alzheimer's. And then my mother passed away from Alzheimer's. And, uh, you know, when you see when you see a picture with dots, when you see a couple of dots, you don't get the connection. But when you start seeing all the dots and you recognize that um, right. that this is not an accident. And um, as I began to do my research, I learned about the APOE4 um, alleles that are, you know, your genes have one or two alleles. And when you have the, not the one, two, or three, but the four allele, um, then the, if you have one, then you have a 30% uh, increase in the risk of Alzheimer's. But if you have two, you have somewhere between 50 and 90% increased risk for developing Alzheimer's. Wow, really? Uh, as I did re uh, research on the APOE4 um, allele and gene, um, I also discovered that it's also a, affiliated um, with coronary uh, um, cardiovascular illness and sudden heart attacks. And um, my okay. grandmother's brother died from a sudden heart attack. My baby brother died uh, from a sudden heart attack. Wow. And my other brother has had a quadruple bypass. Man. I know. And so. Um, I have developed what I call a rejuvenating lifestyle and I have founded it on the work of the leading experts, um, you know, taking um, what they advocate and exploring it and putting it into practice. And I follow the work of Mark Hyman, um, David Perlmutter, um, Dale Bredesen, and uh, uh, Stephen Sinatra. And so uh, as part of of that rejuvenating <clears throat> lifestyle. Dance is an enormous component um, because as I began to do, the, I found two very interesting research studies. Um, and I'm not, the, I'm not the innovator of the of brain dance. Um, uh, there's a woman, Anne Green Gilbert, who has been doing it for at least 30 or 40 years now. Okay. And she, she was the pioneer. 
Uh, but I follow in her footsteps and, and adapting it in a total different way. Uh, my program um, is for women uh, who want to get healthier. And um, so the one study was done by Harvard and they followed senior citizens for 21 years and they studied. They put some time in. Yeah, they studied their leisure time activities. Okay. Okay, so these are not dancers who are um, professionals. These aren't dancers, you know. These are just normal people like go to USA Dance or go to Marilyn Myers Dance Connection Club. Uh, people who dance socially. Uh, socially. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> and they found, and, and so um, when they did the results, you know, 21 years later, they were shocked because they, they didn't expect dance to be uh, the greatest risk producer, reducer. Um, reading- Did you hear that dance is <laughs> dance. the greatest risk Reducer of producer. the risk that of Alzheimer's. That is great. Yeah, uh, if you read um, you know, every day and or, you know, your mind is always going, you have a 35% reduction in the risk of Alzheimer's. If you do crossword puzzles, uh, you know, like Monday through Friday, like the New York Times crossword sure. puzzles, you know, then you have a 47% reduced risk. But if you dance, you have a 76% reduction in the risk of Alzheimer's. Well, so this is well, how's the connection research? though? Harvard research, yeah. Well, yeah. How's the connection there? I mean, because- Well, uh, um, you know, I, that's the question I've been asking myself. And I, I think there's a number of components. Um, you know, uh, golf didn't show up on it. Okay. They, they had 0% reduction. Swimming had 0% reduction. I said, you know, what is the difference between a, a sport or a physical activity and, um, and the, the brain and whatever. And then you have to look at what happens when we dance. We don't dance with our body, we dance with our brain. We do. Yeah, yes. yes, the body, you may be moving the body, but it's the brain. Now, you get on a treadmill and you do left, right, left, right, left, right. There's no complexity. No. No. When you dance, you even if you're doing a simple foxtrot step, you know, walk, walk, side together, slow, slow, quick, quick. There, there's rhythm and there's uh, rhythm as time. So you're functioning in time. There's a complexity of directions. There's a complexity of how much energy do you put into the step. So it's you're clearly there. getting more brain power involved. Yes. And uh, you have music going in on one side of your brain um, and you know, it, it's it's a full brain activity. Yeah, and dance students that. will tell you this because after their <laughs> lesson, they're like, "My brain hurts," <laughs> and it but is complex if you're that. leading, uh -huh. and you have to think about, "I've got to get this arm up uh -huh. by the certain time so that she can react yeah. in this way." And the lady has a lot to think about too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so there's a couple of other things that happen too. Dance is very pleasurable. Sure. And when we're in a state of pleasure, our body produces serotonin, the feel-good neurotransmitter. Okay. When we do turns, and you know how the men love to spin the women around, <laughs> you produce um, norepinephrine or uh, and more transmitters uh, that, that produce a feeling of feeling good, similar to the runner's high. Wow. Yeah. There you go. So the more, that's why the Viennese Waltz was outla um, outlawed in Vienna in early history because people get really happy when they dance. That's why I'm going to get made all the time. There we go. <laughs> well, what is the yeah. Well, I was going to say, yeah. it's not the only reason. But... Yeah, so, um, so what I, I've come up with a word uh, for this experience, um, and that is that dance is a neurotrophic um, workout. Okay. And neurotrophic means brain support. In addition um, to uh, the serotonin, uh, there was a research um, study that was published in March of 2017. So this is still really, really new. Wow. And the study was done, done in Germany and they compared um, physical exercise and dance. 
and they got a group of senior citizens again and they divided them into two groups. One group came, it went into the gym and you know they had the, the ellipticals and the treadmills and the weights and they did a workout uh, twice a week for six months. And then they had a group who came in and danced and every time they came, every two weeks, they would change what they were doing. So if they were doing line dances, then the next week they would be doing waltz or they would be doing switching dance. it up for them. They would switch it up so they had to keep learning new things. Right. Um, and before, before they started working out, they did a blood analysis of what's called brain derived neurotrophic factor. That is the, it's in the blood and it's measurable and it's what makes your brain grow new neurons okay so they measured where they were and they did mris on on them to to get a starting measure sure. six Benchmark. months later they did it again they measured their bdnf their brain derived neurotrophic factor and their brains and they already began to see a marked difference between the physical workout and the dance workout then they went, that was six months. They did it, they, they kept uh, following the, the senior citizens for another year. Um, and now they only worked out one time a week, one time a week. And they compared them again. And the dancers continued to, to have greater levels of BDNF and their brain scans showed growth of neurons wow. Look at this. Yeah. now the um makes you want to go get my dance shoes <laughs> <laughs> save what i have left <laughs> uh, and i mean but the difference was not just a little bit it was a huge difference yeah, it was, you have some charts that we're going to show yeah that. and it was it was just amazing and so uh, i'm not saying that you need to do just dance what happens is that we need to do both workouts we need to do uh, exercise for our cardiovascular system because that's critical but we also need to um, to help our brains exercise our brains exercise our brain yeah, sure yeah I see that mm -hmm. that's awesome yeah. so we had a, a talk about this uh, a while back where we you know I was talking about what what are you doing right now and we discussed that sometimes people aren't quite ready to dance or work out mm -hmm. yeah. because of where their bodies are. Right. Can you help people with that? Well, actually, that's exactly the place where um, I would target. Because see, uh, right now uh, we have an inflammation of, uh, we have an epidemic of inflammation, uh, not in Western culture. And it is the result of urbanization. We have made so many changes in the way that we live that our body responds with inflammation. And so um, I'm dedicating the rest of my life to um, helping people learn, you know, how to drink water. We can't just drink water out of the, you know, out of the tap. We need to take the chlorine out. And there's lots of little things um, that we can do to help ourselves. So when we find ourselves, uh, like when I retired, like I said, I was burned up and used up. I couldn't go in the gym and do a cardio workout. I had fibromyalgia and I could barely walk up and down the stairs oh. and I would force myself to walk. I would park my car on the end of the parking lot and force myself to walk in the building. And you know, if I was shopping or getting groceries, I would make myself walk and it was horribly painful. But I know that movement is life. Everything that is alive has to move. Even plants move with it. You know, they've done time studies on them. And so uh, if I wasn't going to lay down and start dying, if I wanted to affirm life, I had to move, but it was so painful. And I knew that- uh, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and so Believe I said, me. okay, I'm gonna go in the studio and I'm gonna start doing what I can do. And so I started with, um, uh, I've studied Tai Chi, I've studied a little bit of Qigong, I've studied Reiki. I, I said, I'm going, I've studied ballet, modern Native American dance. Um, I'm going to take things from all of these experiences and nurture my body. And I need to start by uh, waking up my body gently. So we do uh, the tapping of, 
of uh, emotional freedom techniques, uh, which was, was just related to acupuncture. And so oh. we tap uh, the meridian places to just wake it up and get some energy going. And so we tap all over our bodies in different places. You do this. <laughs> we do it like this. Oh. You have to be nice to your face. You can't slap yeah, it. Yeah, no, you can. And, and we tap here, and we tap there. And, uh, and That's a nice this, feeling. Yeah, oh, it's a great feeling. It's a it nice just, feeling. Yeah. Try it, baby. I'll, I'll, I'll live vicariously through you, too. And we can massage our ears and our earlobes. My dog loves that. <laughs> They so, love when you do that. And too. after after we we tap, then we we let the body we rock the body and we let the body fall. In other words, we lift our arm and we let it fall. And that we don't need very much energy to let the body fall. It just that 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 kinetic energy we use it to get moving, and um, we do a lot of breathing with it. Breathing so is so yeah. important. Now I, I mean that is such an important part of so many different. Mm -hmm. Uh, forms of you know exercise yeah. and and it's really getting more attention and I'm glad for that yeah. you know and one um, type of workout I do is at Ron Fletcher Pilates and they mm -hmm. they they are, you're studying the breath they first you they're talking mm -hmm. about how how you're breathing yeah. um, but I want to keep talking about what what you're saying and by the way your brain health seems great <laughs> <laughs> so all that dancing you're doing is Quite great a bit of energy, yes. I read that same study um, and I, the details that you're remembering mm -hmm. from it. Um, this is wonderful. Uh, just to continue to talk about this, though, because uh, you talk about people that come to you that for mm -hmm. help, and that their bodies are so tight, so tight, yeah. Yeah. So for them to go to, they couldn't go to a yoga class yet. No, not yet. They have. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, my goal is to get to launch people to get them healthy enough launch that they can them. and they can co continue to come and relax with me because. Uh, in addition to the movement, we, we, I try and teach them Qigong breathing and Tai Chi breathing and um, uh, we yoga breathing and um, I introduce the, the pranayamas to them as well. And what is that? Uh, pranayamas are the yoga breathing exercises where you inhale one through one nostril and exhale through the other nostril. Oh, okay. And I okay. also, um, I'm a big proponent of Sudarshan Kriya Yoga. Uh, which is a pranayama. It's one of the the harder ones to master, um, but I introduce that to uh, the practitioners gradually, uh, starting you know in um, by because we use the the diaphragm uh, and do very quick diaphragm breathing, um, pumping the diaphragm, and so I introduce that gradually. Um, it that meditation increases um, brain derived neurotrophic factor as well and serotonin. Imagine that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So I introduce that relaxation techniques. Um, yeah. It's um, it's a it's a very neurotrophic <laughs> workout. <laughs> so how do people contact you for that? Uh, well, um, uh, I have a website and I have a Facebook page and my website is rejuvenatinglifestyle.com. And um, we'll get that scrolling across yeah, here. So, yeah. And uh, I have a, a Facebook page as well. The um, I have a workshop coming out. Uh, I, I will be doing workshops in the community as well. If anyone just invites me and uh, I am doing workshops on the lifestyle that promotes inflammation reduction um, as I'm well about as that. in the dance and the meditation as well. There we go. Yeah. So beautiful. Awesome. So you continue to contribute to the uh, community. Yeah, I contrib <laughs> contribute, and uh, uh, I'm real excited uh, about the future of dance uh, because um, I, I'm thinking of the implications that when when you have dance, the brain has more neurotrophic factor, which puts kids in a position to absorb and memorize. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, and it keeps, uh, and so there's uh, 200 uh, inflammation diseases, uh, arthritis, um, uh, Parkinson's, uh, and the time uh, to start uh, diabetes is another one. There's, I mean, there's 200, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, those are all inflammation diseases. We can eliminate the, those diseases and uh, Simply with dancing. Well, dancing and nutrition, uh, making sure you get enough sleep. You know, it's lifestyle, what you eat, 
Um, and um, so we, we don't have to, I mean, you, you need to take the medication the doctor gives you, but that's not going to make the illness go away. The only no. thing that will make the illness go away is lifestyle. And so that's what I'm dedicating my life to. And um, I'm willing to speak free of charge to groups uh, to pass on that information. And you can find me at rejuvenatinglifestyle.com. All right, outstanding. Yeah. Well, yeah. <clears throat> you have quite a bit going on, and we can sit there all day and, yeah. and keep talking. Shall we but, do uh, a demonstration? Yes, we're going to. Uh, uh, so it's, we'll, we'll demonstrate just the, the pre-warm-up. <laughs> yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take a break from uh, the interviewer, conclude the interview in terms of just talking. Yeah. And I think this is exciting. This is the first time where we have... Movement yeah. from the podcast. I believe and I believe this, this is a first. This yes. is great timing too because it's January and a lot of people decide to make really great lifestyle changes mm -hmm. um, in January. It kind of inspires them the yeah. new year. So mm -hmm. this is a great um, moment to have you. So um, let's take it. it away, Jose. All right. Well, uh, folks, we're going to go ahead and let uh, uh, Diana get uh, ready to do her thing. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank, yeah, thank yes. you for the opportunity for me to share my passion with us. Oh, that, uh, and, you can, and it shows. I mean, seriously. Uh, yes. you, yeah, she's a lot, a lot of energy, energy, ball of energy here. Yeah. That neuro, what is it? Neuro-derived, neuro I'm going to say brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to memorize that later. I'm going to write that down. She, she only said it 50 yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, uh, Amy, thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah, this All, right. All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, shut this thing down, but we're going to get into something else here uh, soon. Uh, this has been another episode of Dance Teachers Academy. Thank you for watching. <laughs>